Good morning ladies and welcome. Welcome to our masterclass today. I'm so excited to have you all here. Uh, it's, I love this topic. It's really uh, an exciting one for me. The exact three things to include in your sales copy to boost your bottom line and have your ideal client say, I want that. Now, if you can see my slides and you can hear me, then please chat, uh, pop a, a, a notification to me in the chat box. That would be awesome because it's always nice to know that I'm not talking to myself. So who is this webinar for? Well, this webinar is for you if you are fed up with being, really feeling invisible online. If you want more people to sign up for your offers, if you need more traction when you're posting on social media and if you want to hone your messaging so it's super targeted to your ideal client, then if you fall into any of these categories and probably more than one of them, then you are in the right place. So I'll just tell you a little bit about me and who I am. So I'm Pauline Delaney, your host today. And I have spent uh, over 25 years working in the health industry. So I am an optometrist. That's my uh, career, my profession. And I have four gorgeous children aged between uh, 13 and 23. So I have a bit of a range there. Three, girl, uh, three boys <laughs> and one girl. And they are a handful, uh, but they're getting better as they're getting older. And I have spent quite a few hours and days and years doing some lots of training. In the last oh, probably four years, I've really immersed myself in uh, training about internet marketing, particularly, you know, social media, how to create opt-ins, how to, how to work the online world. And it's been really fascinating for me. I went to a seminar in 2013 it was, and that's when I was bitten by the bug, uh, the entrepreneurial bug. I went to a fantastic seminar at the Hilton Hotel in Melbourne, which is where I live, and I was really inspired. Uh, I was, my eyes were opened up to what was actually available as someone, as a woman, as a mother, who, uh, you know, you don't have to spend, uh, invest uh, thousands and thousands of dollars setting up a, an offline business. You could start from scratch an online business, and that was what really appealed to me. So I started doing a lot of training, a lot of uh, online stuff, and felt that there was something else that I really needed to add to that, and that was the personal development training. So I then went and uh, did life coaching, NLP, really got down deep into discovering a lot about myself and about how things work with me and of course how things work with other people as well and that was really inspiring to me too. And what I've done now is I've combined these together. So my business now is really a combination of the coaching, of the marketing, of the business and of course that all important mindset and so I'm now a business and success coach for online female entrepreneurs and this is just perfect for me because I love it, combining all of those things together and it's such an exciting industry to be in. So welcome and uh, let's now get started because we're talking today, we're talking about sales copy and it's just something that you cannot underestimate the power of words. If you are online, if you're an online entrepreneur and no matter what business we're in nowadays, most of us really are in some form and we need to be able to get people's attention in a crowded marketplace. So we have to use the right words, we have to put those words together in the right way and we have to create a story with what we're doing and that's how we can create the the right, uh, the right sentences, the right copy that's going to attract your ideal client and that's the aim and then have that ideal client be ready to then make an investment with you. So we need to start at the basics, we need to get the foundations right first. We need to know who you're talking to. Do you know who you're talking to? Now so many people that I talk to nowadays, they think that they do. 
there's probably two categories. One of them have no idea <laughs> if they're just starting out in business and they're really not sure where they want to position themselves and who they want to help and what services they have. But the other category are the people who are in business. They have been doing it for a while and they have their services, they've decided what they want to do, what their business is and they think they know who their ideal client is but in a lot of cases they really don't or they don't know it in depth. So they don't have enough insider knowledge to be able to really get clear, be specific. Are they, you know, are they male, are they female, are they an entrepreneur, are they a stay-at-home mum? Do they have kids? Do they not have kids? What are the habits and uh, the characteristics of them that set them aside from other people? And this is crucial. It's just so important when you are an online marketer. And as I said before, even if you are someone who is in business and uh, this term doesn't resonate with you, we are all online marketers in some form. If we are, I mean, you're obviously online now listening to this class. So even though that may, may rankle with you a little bit, that term, you are an online marketer. So it is important to know who your ideal client is and what are their pain points? What are the problems that they're having, the challenges that they're having, they're having in the area that you can help them? And they are the things that are going to be key when you are marketing to them. You also want to know their pleasure points. So what is it that, that motivates them? What would make them so excited, so uh, overwhelmed and one, feel wonderful and would then inspire them to want to work with you or buy your product or you know, join your program, whatever it is you have to offer by being really clear on who they are, what the pain and pleasure points are that they have very specifically, then that's going to allow you to be very clear on who you're talking to and then your message is going to be just so, so clear so concise and so targeted. Have you done your research? Maybe yes, you've defined who you want to work with. This is my ideal client. This is my dream client. This is the person that uh, I, I love working with. I'm really passionate about this. The next step then is to find out more about them. What do they want? What is it that they are looking for? What would be a dream outcome for them? What are they complaining about? Listen, watch, uh, watch the sort of things that are happening in the Facebook groups. Listen to what people are complaining about, the things that they're talking about, the things that really get them riled up, the, the conversations that are happening. And take note on what the themes are there, what the specific things are there. Ask them questions. There is nothing more powerful than asking uh, someone who fits the profile of your ideal client questions about what their problems are, about what they want, and then what you have to offer them and getting their take on that. What is their opinion on that? What, it, what do they feel about that? Does this really inspire them? Is this something they would be willing to invest in? So once you're really, really clear on who your ideal client is, then you want to find them and you want to talk to them. You want to get that feedback from them. Interview them. Now this is something I did recently when I was changing the some of the offerings I had in my coaching practice, uh, um, some of the packages and also I'm creating an online program at the minute so I wanted to get some feedback on you know, whether the program I was creating was something that my people would like. What would they like to have in this program? So I set up some client ideal client research interviews and this is something that's very simple for you to do yourself and it's just so powerful because you're getting their direct feedback. Now I'll put in a word of uh, warning here, this needs to be someone who does fit the profile of your ideal client. There's no point you uh, asking your husband, asking your kids you know, getting their opinion unless they are your ideal client because you're not going to get the information that's really going to help you in your marketing. So you, what you can do is, what I did was I put out a, a post on Facebook. I said uh, something like, hey, I'm making some awesome upgrades in my biz and coaching packages and I'd love your help. 
if you are an online female entrepreneur who is looking to uh, grow your business and get more clients, then I'd love a few short minutes of your time to do some ideal client research. Follow the link to book a time and thank you very much. As simple as that. So just asking for help is the first step. And I got quite a few uh, people who are willing to share their insights with me and spend a little bit of time doing that. This is not a selling point, uh, not a selling conversation. This is merely a uh, market research conversation. Now, if you think that you can't do this, if this is you don't know where you're going to get people from, you only need three, at least three. That gives you a bit of a, a profile. So you can ask if you have any friends or family who are specifically your ideal client then you can talk to them. If not, then it's not going to be worthwhile because you're going to get conflicting information and they may want to just be saying the right thing to, to make you happy and to answer the questions nicely for you. So you really want to make sure they are your ideal client. You could send out an email to, um, to colleagues or people you've met at networking events, <clears throat> people you've met online. You can reach out personally. You can make do it by a phone call. You can meet them face to face, you can have a coffee together or a virtual coffee, whatever it is. It's such a, a critical part of your business to be really, really clear on exactly what it is that your people want and then making sure that you then tailor what you have and the copy that you're writing, the exact words that they're saying to you and using that when you are putting out your marketing because that is what is going to attract your audience. Keep your eyes and ears open. <clears throat> so as well as talking directly to people, if you can be listening, as I said, if you're in certain Facebook groups that contain your ideal client, what are they posting about? What are the posts that people put up that get you know, 10, 15, 20 comments on them? People are really getting interested in this. This is a hot topic because these are the sorts of things that you're going to be able to put in your copy and also they're the sort of topics, the challenges, the, the as I said, the problems that they're having, these are the things that are going to be really hot and going to be very attractive to your, uh, your target audience. So if you create, for example, if you create a lead magnet about what they're talking about, then that's something that's going to really attract them rather than you thinking you know what they're talking about and then just putting out what, your, uh, what you think it is because that's not necessarily the case. You can, uh, have, you can get, uh, what's the word, you can get to where you're so uh, tied up with what you are doing and what you are producing that you can't see straight, you haven't got that objective bird's eye view. So you do need to make sure that you open up and are ready to change if you're putting something out there and it's not getting the traction you want because it's not exactly what your people want. So really keep your finger on the pulse of what's going on to them, on for them. Whether you are on social media, whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on Instagram, whether you're on Twitter or Pinterest or whatever it is that works for you. If you are a business to business, you may be on LinkedIn. So see what their people are posting about. What's really getting attention and what is, uh, provoking a reaction from people because that's going to be something very powerful to use for you in your marketing. You can even be face to face so if you do have people whether you are someone who works offline as well or <clears throat> if you're at say a, a networking event or you're out to dinner with your friends who are potentially your ideal client, listen to what they're talking about if it's relevant to your business. So you want to get really clear and specific about who you work with. And I can't emphasize this enough. This is one of the key points that people miss in their marketing. They try to appeal to too many people at once and therefore they just are not compelling to the, to the people that they do want to get. They, they just haven't got that point of difference, that really, that cutting edge that's going to attract them. So this is how you design great copy, knowing exactly who you want to talk to and who your target market is. So let's use the example, say you are a relationship coach. Now you could work with lots of different people. You could be working with uh, young women who are looking for love. 
you know, maybe they've been single for a while and they want to find a partner. You may be working with people who have been divorced and are looking to start over and want to find that new partner. So that is a very different uh, target market. You may be looking, working with couples who are looking to reconnect because they've had a mismatch in their marriage or their, their relationship. So you can see that those three potential audiences are very, very different. And if you put out a generic or a general message or your messaging was very much open to, to try and attract all three of those, you'd find that you didn't attract anyone because people couldn't identify with what you were putting out there. Whereas if you really focused on, you know, someone who's looking for their, their they've been single for a while and they want to find that soulmate, that's going to be a very different messaging to someone who has already had a relationship, who they're divorced, they're recovering from trauma, they've got uh, all that baggage there and they want to find someone again. You know, they might be having trust issues, they might really be scared to t set foot in the dating world again. You know, all the, the online dating is a complete mystery to them. So you really need to hone in on what, who your ideal client is and the specific problems that they are having and that's what's going to really capture their attention by being really specific, really targeted also knowing what you're going to help them with. So you're getting really clear and specific about who you work with and what you offer them. So do you offer them help with online dating, how to navigate uh, the, the online dating world? Now I, <laughs> I've never done this so I would never even think about doing this. Do you help them with finding their soulmate, identifying uh, you know what is the, one of the characteristics to look for in a man that, that's going to make sure that you're a good match. How to have a perfect date, you know, how to make most of your dates fun rather than stressful and, <laughs> and potentially dangerous. How to find out if he's really into you. So all of those things, if you can get really, really clear on your target market, the, the people that you want to work with, the people that you love working with, the problems that they're having and the solution that you have to their problems and then really focus whatever you are saying, particularly when you're online or in all of the marketing that you're doing to that, then that is going to work really well for you. Now when I'm saying marketing, I'm not just meaning, uh, you know, this is my marketing plan, I'm doing marketing now. Whatever you do, when you are putting a post up on Facebook, a friendly post, uh, you know, in a Facebook group, when you are talking to someone at a networking event, whatever it is, you are always marketing. You're marketing yourself, you're marketing your business. So having that consistency of, I suppose, the branding consistency, having the consistency particularly of your message is crucial. So you don't jump from one thing to another, you stay really focused and that's going to be much more powerful, keep you visible, keep you top of mind with the people that you're interacting with or even the people who are friends or connections of the people you are uh, connecting with because your, uh, your network will start to grow as people see how, how uh, specific you are with who you work with and the expertise that you have and they will then help spread the word for you. You want to be generous with your free content. Now I am so, so big on content. I love creating content. I love making really fantastic content and delivering it in a way that is going to really capture the attention of my, my target market and that's what I really want my clients to do and I want you to do as well. I want you to be generous. The more generous you are, the better. Free content is absolutely powerful. Can you imagine if you saw a coach for example and they all you had, you'd never met this person before, you'd never seen them before and they put up a post saying, hi, I'm a business coach, if you're this, this and this, then I think we could work together, sign up here. I think that <laughs> if you'd never heard them before, you've never seen them before, they are, you know, a complete stranger to you, I think that 
they would get zero interaction on that post. However, if you are a business coach and you have been doing, you've been constantly posting each day in your own Facebook group, in other Facebook groups, if you are sending out regular emails to people with great content in there, if you're doing webinars, if you're doing masterclasses, if you're doing regular live streams, if you're even doing seminars or workshops, free workshops, then video particularly is going to be very uh, a great way for you to connect with your audience and build up a relationship with them. And they're going to start to feel like they know you. They're going to get your style. They're going to understand what you do. They're going to see how great the content is that you're putting out there. And that's really going to attract them to you. And then after all that consumption of lots and lots of content, if you then put out that post saying, hi, I'm a business coach. If you're this, this, and this, then I think we'd be a great fit to work together. Let's get started. You may not sign up straight away, but you're going to be much more open because you're going to have built that relationship with them. And free content is one of the most powerful ways, particularly online, to really stand out and to build up that relationship with people. So the more generous you are, the better. Let them experience for themselves you and how you can help them. So, you know, blogs maybe, emails, as I said, videos in your Facebook group. Social media, of course, is huge. Podcasts. Give away your best stuff. Now, before you fall off the chair, <laughs> bear with me because if you can give away your, re your best stuff for free, then people are going to be blown away. They're going to think, you know, if she's giving that much for free, wow, imagine if I joined her program, what would she be teaching me in there? What would we be doing there? You're, not, you're going to be strategic with what you give away. If you've got a, a seven-step program, you're not going to give all seven steps away. You might give away one step. This is the key. Give away, be strategic with what you share. Be specific, so concentrate on one or two things and go really deep with those one or th two things to demonstrate your expertise. And that's going to be a lot more powerful than you giving them 10 different things in your free content. By giving them one thing and going really deep with that, then you're really going to demonstrate how well you know your topic, how well you know your subject, and how how uh, connected you are with them and their problems and how you really are the person that can help them. So you can hint at the next step, but give them all of one or two steps. So say for example you're someone who uh, is going to teach your course or your program is going to teach them how to structure a webinar. So it might be the six steps to creating the perfect structure of a webinar. Now you're not going to give away therefore the whole six steps in your free content that's going to help sell them into your program. What you will do instead is be really generous and maybe give them step one and even step two, you know, maybe how to choose the best topic. Number two, how to design the content. And that's much more generous and it's going to really get their attention more than you giving them little bits of vague, non-general things that they can't implement that are really surface stuff uh, because it's not going to be compelling enough for them to then make that judgment as I said that if, there's, if you're so great with your free content then imagine what your paid content will do. That leap won't happen. So what are the things you need to include in your sales copy? Well, there are three things that are super, super, super important. And a bit later today, we are going to go into the formula to create a powerful sales page. And that's really awesome. I love that. But for now, let's just talk about what are these three things that you need to include in your sales copy that's going to make sure that you are going to boost your bottom line and have your ideal client say, I want that. 
Well, the first step is to nail the three Ps. And we'll go into this in a minute. Number two is to concentrate on their end game and not the tools you use for them to achieve that end game. And number three is to have a super clear offer. So the three Ps, what are the three Ps? The three Ps are the person, the pain and the pleasure. So the person, who is uh, the definition of your ideal client? Who is your target market? Who is your avatar? There are so many different ways to say this and I know ideal client is used over and over again ad nauseum but it really does define <laughs> exactly who we're talking about. Your dream client, that's another one. I do like that one. P, what, the third, second P, what problems are they having? What are their pain points? What are the things that they are, they are complaining about that they are bothered by, worried by, overwhelmed by so much that they are willing to invest their time, energy and money into to find a solution. And the third P is their pleasure points. So what are the dream outcomes that they want? What do they really, really want? What would motivate them to take action, to sign up for your program, to buy your product, to start a coaching package with you, whatever it is. Now if you can use those three P's in your copy, then that is going to let people know that yes, this is for me. I know that this person is talking to me and I will listen because they understand me. They get my problems. This is, yes, they've nailed it. Yes, I know. That's exactly what's bothering me and the third P is what you can offer them, the end game that they're going to get, what's so exciting to them that they are going to be motivated to take you up on whatever offer it is or call to action you have. So if you can incorporate those three P's into whatever messaging, whatever copy you are putting out there, particularly in your sales copy, then it's going to really have a a great impact and attract the right people to you. Number two is to concentrate on their end game and not the tools that you use to help them achieve that end game. So you want to talk up the pleasure, the dream outcomes, what they're going to get, what are the benefits and not how you do it. So you want to avoid focusing on the how. So if you are someone who helps people lose weight, for example, then you're going to be promoting how you're going to lose five kilos in just six weeks and be able to fit back into your pre-baby clothes, feel fantastic, fit and toned without dieting and feeling deprived. You're not going to want to go into, this is how many calories you need to eat each day. These are the exercises we're going to be doing. This is how many times you need to eat each day. You don't want to go into the how. Now the how will come because obviously you need to use the how to get the end game, but when you're marketing to people, when you're creating sales copy, you want to really attract them with the excitement, with what they're going to get. What are they going to get by working with you? What is their brilliant outcome going to be? And if you can make that so powerful and so clear and so big, then that's going to mean they're going to want it, they're going to want that. That you know the how will come later. You can tell them about the how later, but to get their attention, you need to tell them what they're going to get, what's in it for them. Now you also want to have a super clear offer. Because again, people need to understand quickly in an online world. Things move fast. If they don't understand fast what it is that they, you're offering, what it is you want them to do, then they're not going to be able to take the next step because it's confusing. They'll go, oh, I didn't get it. Move on to the next one. You may have the most brilliant copy in there, but you haven't, but if it's not clear enough, then people are not going to do what it is you want them to do. So you need to make it really easy to know what you want them to do. Have a very clear, concise call to action. Sign up for my webinar. Download the guide. 
register for the video series, join my program. Be clear over clever. Clever can come later. If you have something, you know, a brilliant little uh, piece of copy that you've written that is just so clever because it's got nuances, it's got quirkiness in there, that's wonderful but it's not good marketing because people will look at it and if they don't get it straight away, they're going to scroll past it. They're going to click on something else. They're not going to open the email. They, you know, whatever it is, they're not going to read the blog if it's too, if it's too clever. So use that clearness. Even like this is something as well. Your font. If you've got a a fancy uh, handwriting type of a font that you're putting on your website, and it looks really arty and awesome. If people can't read it, it's not serving its purpose. If people have to really concentrate to see what it says, then you're going to find again they're going to scroll past it because you have such a a short attention span of people who are online. They they've only got a second or so before the next thing is there. You're you're in the middle of a, a whole lot of other stuff. It's it'd be different if you had, you know, the internet to yourself and there was just you and all they had to read was your stuff. You could be as long-winded, you could be as prolific as you wanted to, but it, that's not the case. <laughs> you are competing with so many other distractions and you need to make sure that yours stands out, that yours is the one that is compelling enough to make their fingers stop as they're scrolling past it and actually click and take that next step. So what are the tools and strategies that you use? Now you can use this in your marketing as well, particularly if they are unique or different. So that can be really powerful and they can set you apart from your competition. So if you have something really different that you use, then that can be a part of your marketing. As long as it's going to be clear again, that the end game is this, you know, the benefits they're going to get, the brilliant outcomes they're going to be getting are this. So maybe as we're talking about the weight loss example, if you use something special with the weight loss, if you have a combination of uh, maybe mindset tools, affirmations, uh, a balanced eating plan and maybe 15 minute workouts, then those things are much more unique than someone who says, okay, I'll help you lose weight, we're going to work on diet and exercise <laughs> and that's going to make you lose weight. So those tools and strategies, be clear on what they are and see how you can use them as well in your copy if necessary or if it's going to be something that's, that's unique enough to focus on in the marketing. So you want to know as well what are the awesome outcomes you get for your clients their end game. Be really, really clear on this because this is going to be the bright, shiny object that's going to grab their attention. So if it's for weight loss, you know, you're going to lose weight, you're going to feel awesome, you're going to look um, in the mirror and you're going to feel absolutely fantastic. You're going to fit into those hottest clothes that you haven't worn for the past 10 years. Your husband's going to look at you and he's going to get that look in your eye, his eye again that he hasn't had since you got married. Uh, what else? You're going to go down to the park with your kids and instead of you sitting on the, the park bench there watching them, when they call you over, you're actually going to run over there and you're going to push them on the swing and you're going to climb on the monkey bars with them. Just imagine how awesome that would be. If you're a business coach, what are you going to offer your uh, clients? You're going to get 10 new clients this month. Imagine having 10 brand new clients. Imagine making an extra $10,000 each month. Imagine being able to book 10 discovery calls every month easily. Having uh, a six-figure launch for your next online program. Building, I mean, these, obviously these have to be authentic. You can't, you can't be promising things that you can't deliver. But if you can really make build up those outcomes, the end game for your client that's really going to attract their attention, that's going to really be magnetic for them and make them take action, then this is key. This is how you are going to get them to 
do whatever it is you want to do. Sign up for your program, join your webinar, you know, join your podcast, whatever it is. By really getting clear and getting down with your client research. This is where your client research comes in as well. So if you've been interviewing, say for example me, the interviews that I had with my ideal clients, some of them were saying things like uh, they had no time. So they didn't know how how they could fit everything in. They had so many things to do. So if you can offer them, you know, say a, a 15 minute Facebook strat marketing Facebook strategy marketing plan. That's all they had to do each day and their Facebook marketing was done. They could use, instead of spending you know, two, three hours a day on Facebook, they could cut it down to, two, to 15 minutes. That's a pretty impressive end game. So by really using that market research that you've done with your ideal clients and then using the things that they've told you that they want, that they're struggling with and putting that into your marketing, then you're going to be really, really specific and attract your ideal client every time. You want to use compelling copy. Write an awesome uh, headline, make it really sexy. So something like uh, 10 easy ways to identify if he's available and a potential soulmate. Uh, my secret formula to losing five kilos in just six weeks and you don't need to give up your favorite foods. Uh, how I booked seven clients in just two weeks and had my first five figure month. Six easy steps to create the perfect post that will stop your ideal client's news feed scrolling in their tracks. So a really awesome headline is going to be the first thing that's going to attract their attention. If you are creating a webinar, if you are writing an email, that subject line, that is going to determine whether they open the email. If you're writing a blog post, if you have a great uh, headline, that's going to encourage people to actually read the blog post. So really, really important. And that's number one. I mean, if you haven't got an awesome headline, then you're not, it doesn't matter how great the rest of your copy is, nobody's going to read it because <laughs> they're not going to get that far. So next, your juicy bullets. So an awesome headline and then you want to have a few bullet points that's really going to enhance the headline and make them want to read on or make them want to do whatever the action is that you want them to take, whether it is sign up for your program, register for your free call, whatever it is. So you know, in this virtual workshop, you will discover how to get the attention of your ideal client and stop them scrolling past your posts insider tips to attract people who are blown away by your content and are ready to take the next step with you. This is for my uh, uh, the, the six easy steps to create the perfect post. The secret to writing a compelling post that's guaranteed to get a ton of likes and comments, no more crickets. So having those really juicy bullets, three or four of those, are going to be really great. So this is say if you have uh, if you've got a lead magnet, or you've got a webinar or something coming up you want people you want people to sign up for. Having the really awesome headline and then the juicy bullets that tells them what they're going to get is really powerful. That's what you're going to use in your marketing. Adding in a so that you can. This is just that little extra tweak that can make all the difference. So, you know, lose five kilos in six weeks so that you can fit into your wedding dress easily. Find the perfect date so that you can stop trawling the online dating world and live happily ever after with your soulmate. So, the so, you, so that you can really tells them, right, this is what you're getting. But this is what it actually means. You're actually getting this. This is what it's going to allow you to do. This is what it's going to, this is the real result that you're going to get from this. And it really just multiplies the effect of whatever you're talking about. It makes it so much more powerful. And if you can use powerful words and adjectives, this is really awesome too. You know, special, awesome, great, easy, simple, fantastic just adds on that, you know, the six simple steps 
the three uh, the three key elements. The my awesome new program, whatever it is, it's just going to make it give it that little bit of extra oomph and make it that little bit more compelling. If you can use statistics, these are awesome. You know, nine out of ten. 10 uh, businesses fail in their first year. Imagine closing three out of every four of your sales calls. Uh, you know, t uh, nine out of 10 people lose five kilos in the first three weeks of my program. I just made that one up. <laughs> How to overcome 99% of every objections you get in a sales call and then close 80% of them. Just by putting those statistics in there uh, can make your post or your, your copy really stand out. Now, you can use your own statistics and that is awesome. You know, how many clients you've had, how, the results your clients have had, where they started and where they are now. So using those unique details can really help you customise your copy. If you don't have your own statistics though, if you are new, if you are a new coach or you're new in business, then you can use industry stats. So like I said, nine out of 10 businesses fail in the first year. You know, three out of every coaches decides to um, quit. Whatever it is, you can look up those industry stats if you haven't got your own to use and that gives you still that credibility and gives you the, the magic of having the stats there and you don't have to feel that just because you're brand new, you can't use that as a, a marketing tool. So now we're getting on to the powerful sales page formula, which is awesome. And we have six steps here, and I'll go through these in detail. So if you are writing, now this is, can be a specific, when I'm saying sales page, you know the sales pages, if you're selling a program, if you're selling a product, whatever it is, usually you'll have a sales page. However, you can put this into a post as well. This is the formula that you can use to sell, whether it is to sell a program, whether it is to sell getting people into your Facebook group, whether it is to sell um, getting them on a call with you, or to sell you and your business. Whatever it is, we are always marketing or selling in some way. So this is the formula that you can use that means that you're really going to have the best chance of turning the person that starts reading this from a cold prospect into a hot client or a hot lead at least. So number one is to hit the pain points. Number two is to identify with them and share your story. Three is to share the solution. Four is you can do it too. And five, you're not alone, it really works. And six is let's make it even better. So number one, hit their pain points. Now we've talked about this already today. The ideal client, who are they? What pain points do they have? What are the biggest problems that they're having? The ones that they go, they talk about all the time. They can't stop. It's the, it's the really, there'll be one or two or even three really key points that you can uh, hone in on. Of course, what you're doing with this sales copy as well is you're having an objective. So you want them to do something at the end of this. You might want them, like I said, buy your product or program. Therefore, the pain points you hit need to be relevant to that. So they need to be the pain points that are going to, you're going to overcome in this program. Go deep, make it burn, and get really, really clear and use specific examples. So hit their pain points. This is the first thing you're going to do. Then you're going to identify with them and share your story. So show them you've been where they are now. You know, uh, if we if we do the uh, let's see, if we do the weight loss one, you know, are you? Uh, are you feeling frumpy? Are you finding none of your clothes fit you anymore? Are you feeling depressed every time that you look in the mirror? Do you stand on the scales and and start crying because you're looking at the, the number there? That's your pain points. Identify with them, share a story. I know exactly how you feel. I was there. Five years ago, I would uh, 
my kids would come up and say, "Mummy, uh, you know why why can't you come and play with us at the park? Why can't you do this?" And I was miserable. Show them that you have been where they are now. Share your story. Get on the same page with them. But what is really, really important here is be sure to let them know that you are now over that. You were there, but you overcame the problems and you found the solution. So you don't want to be saying, yeah, I know exactly how you feel. I keep getting up every morning and I'm, I'm sitting down having breakfast and feeling miserable. I feel just the same way that you did. <laughs> because they're going to think, hang on, she's not going to be help, able to help me. She's in the same boat I am. In fact, she's even worse. What you would instead be saying, but things change for me. I discovered a brand new, um, a brand new weight loss solution, and now I've lost 20 kilos. I feel brilliant. I run down to the park with my kids, and everything is awesome. <laughs> so show them how you have overcome that. You had that aha moment. So you're going to share the solution. What was your revelation? Your aha moment. Something that made it turn around. You know, the kid, my kid came, my child came to me and said, "Why don't you run with us at the park anymore?" And that made me stop. I looked in the mirror and thought, "This is enough. I've had enough. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to uh, take this supplement. I'm going to change the way I eat. Whatever it is, celebrate how things are now. Talk up the solution. How fantastic it is now that you no longer have this problem. Now, if it is not you necessarily. You can share other people's stories. If you say for weight loss, for example, then not all of us have. If we are a weight loss coach, we may not have had that big uh, weight problem ourselves. However, your clients have. So if you're not sharing your own story, you can share a client's story. People that you work with, people that you know, that can be equally as powerful. Again, what I said before, you have to be authentic. We don't want you making stuff up and pretending something that isn't true because you will be found out and then you're going to erode any trust that you've built up with people. You can do it too. Tell them that it can happen for them too. You know, yes, yes, I overcome this. I lost my 20 kilos. And it's not that hard. I've got the idea. I've got the system now. I know how to do it and I can teach it to you. It's easy. Show them how by sharing your experience, your revelations, your uh, client stories, step by step. Give them a picture of how things can look for them now. And then tell them you're not alone, it really works. That's where you're really going to go to town on your social proof. You know, Mary, my client, was a mum of three and she put on 10 kilos after her pregnancy and she managed to lose five of them in the first week. <laughs> uh, Andrea, she was always... Uh, feeling lethargic and lay on the couch. She was falling asleep every day because she just couldn't overcome her weight problem. And now look at her here. Here she is uh, running a marathon. Putting in that social proof. Testimonials is great too. Uh, hi, I'm Mary and I I've worked with Pauline for a while and uh, after doing her program, I found that it was brilliant. I lost five kilos in my first week and I feel so much more energetic. My kids are always wanting me to come and play with them. How much more powerful would that be than you just telling them? So having that social proof is really, really important and really building up how brilliant your solution is. And then make it even better. Add in extra stories, extra proof, add in bonuses. Tell them that all the awesome extra stuff that's going to happen to them now that they have overcome this problem. Build a really big vision of how it's going to look. Make it big, bright and gorgeous. So let's do a recap. The powerful sales page formula. Now you have the, the formula, you can create this yourself very easily. And as I said, 
you can put this in a post, you could put it in an email or a newsletter, you could put this in a blog post, particularly when you have an objective and you want a call to action to happen at the end. So firstly you're going to hit those pain points, really get clear on what the number one problems are of your target audience that you're going to solve by uh, whatever it is you're offering in this sales sequence here, sales page. Identify with them and share your story or a client's story so that they really go, right, yeah, she's right there with me. She knows how she knows what it feels like. She knows people who knows what know what it feels like. I, I can uh, really relate to her. Share the solution. She overcome that. Wow. You can change. Things can be different. Number four, you can do it too. She can't, she's not the only one, she's not the exception. She actually has a system, she has a product, she has a, a way that she can help me do it too. Wow, that is awesome. You're not alone, it really works. She's not the only one that's done it. Look at all these other people who've done it. This is fantastic. Look at all this social proof. Look at all her clients. Look at all the um, stories that she has, all the people she's worked with. Listen how great they think she is. This is fantastic. And then make it even better. Uh, you know, if if you work with her, you also get this, and you get a free um, a free kitchen sink. <laughs> you get a lawnmower, whatever it is. Make sure that the, it does relate. So you're going to add in some bonuses, some extra stories, some extra info, particularly uh, aligned with the offer that you're making, of course. So don't offer things that are completely irrelevant. Throughout this whole story, this whole sales page, you want to be very congruent. You want to make sure that it all one thing leads to another in a very smooth, streamlined fashion. And that's another thing, another aspect of selling or copy that's really important. It's really being following the right step-by-step -step formula so that you do lead your people on a journey that ends up with them having no option but wanting to do whatever it is you want them to, join your program, you know, sign up with you, whatever it is because you've made such a compelling uh, story for them and journey for them that really the only option at the end is the one that you give them because they've, they've led on, been led on that perfect pathway. Okay, so that's it. Our powerful sales formula. We've got, uh, we've been through the exact Three things to include in your sales copy that's going to boost your bottom line and have your ideal client say, I want that. So you should have a really, really great understanding now of how to structure your copy, how to use the research that you've uh, done, how to do the ideal client research, how to then use that ideal client research to make your copy as powerful as possible and to really attract potential clients who are going to be perfect for you and have your whatever it is you offer as a perfect solution for the problem that they have. Now if you find that you're still not quite there yet, <laughs> and I mean obviously this was a quick masterclass today, I, uh, I hope you got a lot out of it, but if you do still need some help then I, uh, I do have an offer for you today. Now this is a free offer and I would love to help you map out your 30 days of content. So we would go through, uh, this is a 30 minute phone session and what we do in this session, we actually map out all of your contents for the next 30 days. So we make sure that it's clear, it's concise, it's aligned to who you work with, who your ideal client is and make sure that what we are putting out there is going to be very, very attractive to them and is going to help them follow that per perfect pathway from you know, coming into whatever to meet you, to experience you and then coming to where they want to then take that next step and work with you. So we'll talk about your next blogs, your newsletters, the webinars you're going to plan out, what Facebook posts you're going to do, all of that. So very highly targeted, relevant and real quality content. You can book your session here, so please uh, take me up on that. I would love to uh, go ahead and I'm just trying to share this, let me just see if I can do this. 
Oops. Oh, no, I don't think I can. I was going to share it in the chat box. That's okay. No problem. You've got it there, and I will also send you out an email with this in there now. So thank you very much for being here today. If any questions pop up, pop them in there in the chat box for me, and I will answer them. I have really enjoyed spending time with you here today, ladies. It's been fantastic. This is a topic I love talking about, content and content that's going to help you sell, help you attract your ideal client, help you sell whatever it is you want and really hone your marketing skills so that you are, you can put out that really powerful copy that's, that's not going to be run-of-the-mill, everyday generic stuff but is going to be really targeted and attract your ideal client every time. So thank you so much for being here with me today. I have really enjoyed it and I will catch you next time, ladies. Bye-bye.